All right, let's talk a little bit about your retirement now. Um, you know, in 1991 when you retired, um, you didn't just sit around. You, you kept yourself pretty busy yeah. doing a variety of different yeah. things. And one of those first things that you uh, had done or that you'd mentioned was that you tutored a number of kids. Well, uh, after my stroke, was, uh, if I could start back there, sure. um, when I had my stroke, it was a, it was a, uh, called a brainstem stroke. And so um, what I could move uh, when I finally woke up about three or four days later, uh, I could move this finger, and I I could talk, but I um, didn't talk well. But I I could I could speak. Um, I saw double, with, and I couldn't swallow, uh, and I could not walk or use either one of my arms or anything. So um, I spent time at um, at uh, first the hospital with in therapy a, a lot, and then I went over and spent a couple months at Mary Freebed, uh, where I had to stay and, and learn how, how. And I had decided if um, the kids I taught at school who were had problems with reading, developmental problems with reading, if they could overcome those, I could overcome this. So um, I, I spent uh, time there and I came home and, and had a lot of work to do. First I was in a wheelchair and then I was in a walker. Um, in order to build up strength a lot, I would um, put my clothes, after I got them out of the washer, I'd put my clothes in, in, the, in my little basket on the front of my walker, take them over next door where the clothesline was and hang them up, because that was therapy for me. Mm -hmm. right. So then, then I got so that uh, I wanted to, um, I wasn't just going to sit around the house anyway. And so then I did do some uh, teaching, uh, subbing, or I, didn't, I don't mean subbing, I mean uh, I would uh, have tutoring. I would do tutoring over here. And uh, I helped some different children with their reading problems and, and did that. And then I worked at... Um, at uh, Cherry Creek for a while in the office mm -hmm. uh, would help out there. Yeah. And you also got involved in other organizations yes. as well. Yes. What were some of those organizations that you well, got involved with? Um, I got involved in, uh, uh, of course I've been involved for years in preschool, mm -hmm. uh, United Methodist Preschool, mm -hmm. and so by this time I was either uh, secretary or um, chairman. Um, Mrs. Thaler and I took turns being chairman for um, years. And in fact, I've been involved for with preschool for 30, 30 about almost 40 years now. And um, anyway, <clears throat> I then got involved with um, an organization that our church started, which was uh, to uh, feed the people who did not have food, and uh, they called it FROM, which uh, was uh, short for Flat River Outreach Organization, uh, ministries, ministries, they called that. And what I do there, and still do, is I uh, sort clothes every every Monday morning um, and uh, clothes that uh, that we can use at uh, for people who don't have the money that they to get clothes why uh, we sort and see uh, from people who have more than they want and um, that they drop the clothes off there and then we sort them and either send them on if they're not uh, up to our standards or else we 
put them on hangers and for in the store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, you were involved in Lowell Sesquicentennial. Yes. As well. Oh, that was years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and what did you do for that? Well, let's see. I I did a, a number of things. I think I took over um, getting a um, luncheon together that the person who uh, had that job um, couldn't do it for some reason or other. So I was asked if I would take that over and, and uh, run that luncheon. Okay. And uh, the art train was something else that you yes, were involved with? Yes, uh, yeah. And when we used to have art trains that would come into town here, I think Ray Queda, uh and the Arts Council kind of got those started. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would be a docent on the art trains uh, as, as they would come in. Okay. In other words, be someone who could um, tell people about different things that were on the art train or or just be available. Okay. And um, you worked uh, for the Fallsburg Fall Festival mm, yes. for a number of years. What yeah. have you done for that? Uh, well, um, we have, I of course, belong to the Lowell uh, Historical Museum and um, artist Barber, my sister-in-law, and uh, uh, Terry, that's not right, I can't even think of her name now, the Cadwalder, Tina, Tina, Tina excuse me, Tina Cadwalder and I um, are chairman of that and we sell apple dumplings out at the historical, um, at, at Fellsburg, um Festival. And also before that, I uh, have been the head of the decorating committee uh, several years where we would uh, go out and get all the flowers in the fall um, for and do the uh, bouquets and stuff that we had around at the Thalesburg Festival. Okay. Well, what other kind of things are you involved with at our uh, Lowell Area Historical Museum? Oh, well, uh, let's see. I'm... Uh, chairperson along with Dodai for the um, programs that we do. Um, I'm a docent. Uh, I also work uh, with acquisitions uh, one day a week where we go and just catalog all the things that are brought into the museum. Um, I'm uh, head of the parade committee um, where we build uh, uh, parade things that we do in the parade. Um, You're a board member. Yes, that's yeah. right. I'm and you've been the vice president of the yes, of the board in the past. Yes, and I was vice president. Yeah. Here. And, and I know now, you know, something that we just started here uh, recently, but you're also working on the uh, Food Sizzling Summer Concert yes, Committee, too. that's right. Yes. So at the, at the big yeah. summer concerts, yeah. you're down there cooking right. burgers and popcorn uh -huh. and doing all that kind of stuff as well. Right. So right. lots of different things down at the museum that right. we're involved with. Um, you've also been involved in the Methodist Church for a number of years, and um, in the past, both you and Ivan were... Um, Sunday school teachers. Yes. How many years did you do that for we, about? Uh, we taught uh, senior high Sunday school for 27 years. Dad and I did. Uh, we had all our own kids in it, but we also had many of the others that went through, of course, high school. Uh, and uh, we enjoyed that very much. We always said that we learned more than what we um, taught the kids in Sunday school. Our take was we did a lot with um, also the Bible, but also we brought it to uh, what everyday things that that went on had to do with uh, your faith mm -hmm. and, and how you could use your faith in those different things. And we um, would uh, do canoe trips. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they were for 
a purpose. They were for either cleaning. We'd do a canoe trip that, where we would clean out uh, the Manistee, uh, portion of the Manistee River and, and, and things like that. That's okay. Okay. Now you, you've traveled to a number of uh, exotic locations <laughs> and uh, one of those places where you've spent quite a bit of time and that you still have a place today is St. Croix. Mm -hmm. um, so about how many years have you been going to St. Croix? And, and tell us how it all came about that you decided to go to that location. Well, um, let's see. We've been there for, well, a good 20 years or more. Mm -hmm. um, I think the reason that we went there to begin with was that um, I had been working this one year on the Michigan Reading. Uh, I think it was the year I was president, and um, it, that had been a very busy year, it, not only with all of that, but at school, and Dad had had a busy year, so we had been on uh, a number of cruises that we had taken, and we just wanted to do something different, where we did not have to see uh, a lot of people. We could just sit and vegetate. And uh, so uh, I went to our uh, travel agent, uh, Shirley, and she said, uh, I was telling her what I'd like to do or what we'd like to do. And she said, well, she had just gotten back from St. Croix and um, because the travel agents used to be able to do that. And uh, she enjoyed it very much and she thought maybe that we would like it uh, and so I said okay sign us up so uh, she did the the resort that we were at which is the Buccaneer uh, was a, a nice resort where you did not even have to leave the resort for anything uh, other than uh, we went into church the jitney took us into church one day or on Sunday, but uh, the rest of the time uh, we could just sit on the beach. Uh, the restaurants were right there. If you wanted anything, they had a little store and there were tennis courts and whatever. Um, I enjoyed it very much. Um, Ivan, I kept him on the beach for about a day and a half and then he went exploring. Yeah. And, that's about all you could keep him uh, sitting on the beach. But anyway, that's how we got started. Oh. And we loved it and have been yeah. back ever since. Well, how many years were you at the Buccaneer Resort? Uh, well, uh, I'd say a good 12 years of, uh, we would go there. Okay. Um, because we only had spring vacation. Um, and uh, so we would... Uh, go and spend our spring vacation there. Mm -hmm. And then after uh, Hurricane Hugo, or about mm -hmm. that time of the mm -hmm. hurricane, uh, you started looking for some land or looking mm -hmm. for a house, looking mm -hmm. for something else mm -hmm. besides the Buccaneer. Mm -hmm. How did that go? Well, uh, after Hugo, there were uh, it practically devastated the island. And um, it, there were lots of uh, pieces of land that all they had on them were, was a cistern, uh, which you have to have over there to build, uh, you have to have a cistern. And whereas we here have basements, they have a cistern. And um, we, uh, Mr. Uh, Ivan, uh, thought that uh, he'd like to build and he'd like to find one of those um, pieces of land that just had the cistern on it, um, it and uh, I said that would be fine but I wasn't living in a tent over there for um, like three years until you got it built because everything had to come in by boat and uh, it takes about three years or longer to even build a house over there. So. Um, I said I wasn't going to do that, so um, he said, well then let's look at 
some property because we both decided that's what we'd like to have it as a as a winter home. Mm -hmm. So you eventually found a place uh, right. called the Reef. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, how how did that come about? You you put an offer on this place. Yeah. Well, um, when whenever Dad or I talked to, would buy a home like any of the homes that we have around here or anything, uh, we would always uh, we would each make an offer or write an offer and, and uh, what we think they'd be worth and then we put them together and music came out in the middle mm. and uh, so the uh, this um, gal realtor uh, took us around and looked at a, do a number we looked at a number of different places and we chose the reef uh, one of the things about it, it was a gated community, and uh, there would be somebody there all the time that looked after your property, so uh, you didn't have to worry about it <clears throat> when you weren't there. And so we made an offer on the place, and, uh, and uh, thinking that the people would not take the offer because they really wanted much more than what we uh, our offer was so uh, this was like the day before we were to go home so the morning we were eating the morning that we went home we were eating our breakfast uh, at the, one of the restaurants at the Buccaneer and uh, the real estate gal came and said to us hello new condo owners and they had taken our offer. So we, uh, we really went back and I had a few more minutes to look at it than I did before. And I still really, when I came home, didn't know what we really had, but, but I did know we had a condo, so mm -hmm. there we yeah. were. Now you have your own place down there, right? And uh, both you and Grandpa like to do a variety of different activities while you're on the island. Mm. So, first of all, what were some of the things that you like to do on the island? Oh well, um, I um, joined the Landmark Society over there, which is like our museum over here. Only they, well, they do have uh, one museum, which is a, an old. Uh, one of the estates that uh, sugar plantation estate uh, that they have as their museum. Um, but they also do things uh, like um, have different, uh, during the month of February, they uh, have different houses uh, that, that they advertise that people can go and visit um, every week. Every Wednesday, there'd be three houses uh, that you could go and tour. And it would show off uh, the different um, styles of, of houses or estates that are on the island. Um, what old, really old looking ones or really up to date new ones. And what I would do, and many of the other ladies from the reef, and and uh, would go and be, we had to be docents at them. And mostly what we had to do would be to just stand, uh, if there were three or four of us, we'd be placed strategically around the, uh, the house, and so that we could keep track of the, the people that went through and to see that nothing got taken mm -hmm. at the house and sometimes uh, the people whoever owned the place would also give us some history if there was something uh, very special about that room or mm -hmm. the furnishings in it and then we'd have to tell. Okay. Mm -hmm. You also did some things for fun though too. Mm -hmm. well, what did you do for fun, you know, just oh. for yourself? Well, for fun? Yeah. Oh. Well, I did a lot of walking. You know, at one time, I did a lot of walking around the uh, around there, and uh, I uh, I do, do a little bit of sunbathing, and I do a little bit of golf, uh, just for my own self. I'm not a 
not a golfer. I just sure. we, there were a couple of us that we just enjoyed getting out and doing that. Well, since you live right on the course, you right. might as well every once right. in a while, right? Right. Yeah. Now, how about Ivan? Did he like to do anything? Oh well. He keep he, himself busy. Yeah, he he'd be busy. Uh, when they found out, uh, people found out that he was a, a contractor, and you know, uh, they he had more jobs. They would call him here at home before we went, and he would have one whole page of a notebook of things that he was going to do. And then, of course, people uh, after he got there, and he was still working on things so he worked all the time that he was uh, that we were there unless unless somebody came and then we'd show him around the island but otherwise why well, he he enjoyed working and meeting the people and doing different things for the for the wreath there's a number of things down there with his initials in them that he's that he's done Mm -hmm. I helped him pour cement once. Oh, yeah. I'll never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you guys have uh, have you know been kind of world travelers. You you traveled around to different places, um, gone on different vacations before. Um, where are some of the places that you've gone on vacation? Oh, well, let's see. Uh, we went to Hawaii, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been to Europe. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, the, our, most of our trips uh, were, of course, uh, around wherever they played ball. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was the big. Okay. Big and place. and where are some of those places where you you travel to with Grandpa uh, uh, as he uh, played softball? Oh, when he played softball. Well, let's see. We've been to California, mm -hmm. in Florida, in Texas, in Iowa, and Illinois. And Ohio, uh, one of the one of either Kentucky or um, uh, either Kentucky or um, I think it, it was either um, Kentucky or one of the Carolinas. I can't remember which which right now, but we've been down there too. So, and of course, all around Michigan. And um, what were some of those tournaments for? What they were? Well, you if you were on a team and and you were in a league, then you uh, if you won many of your games, then you went on could go on to a tournament just like a football. So they were kind of like qualifying. Best. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And, and it was the senior softball world series. Yeah, different, yes, different tournaments yes, that were part of different, that. Different, yeah. There'd be one for the southern states, and there'd be one for the middle Atlantic states, and mm -hmm. you know, and all different areas would have these. And then the one we went to every year was out in Utah okay. at the World Series. Yeah. One of the other things that I wanted to ask you about too that we didn't talk about uh, last time were. Um, the multitude of exchange students that you oh. guys had along the way. Do you remember who your first exchange student was? Or? Well, our first ones uh, were what well, we ended up with. Well, yes, I think so. Um, were Makoto from uh, from Japan and Salvador from Mexico, okay. and we had both of those. But over the years, we've had them from Spain and Russia. And uh, well, where was Dragon from? Serbia. Serbia. Montenegro. Yeah, Montenegro. Um, and let's see, we've had uh, some girls that came in the in the summertime from uh, one from France, mm -hmm. and uh, one one of the other girls. I think she was from Mexico too. Okay. But over the years, we've had a number of of them. Yeah. Well, it's been fantastic visiting with you and learning a little bit more about your life. Well, thank you. Um, before we close here, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us? Well, I don't. Th I think one of the other things that I'm into now mm -hmm. is um, is a, 
uh, from Michigan Reading Association is the is past president's uh, legacy fund. Uh, the picture you're holding up now is from when I was president of Michigan Reading Association, and uh, but I'm on the board now of past president's legacy fund. And uh, what we do is to raise money to send uh, new teachers or teachers who have been put into a different curriculum than the, what they have taught be for many years, or, you know, as some of the teachers get jostled around into some area, <coughs> excuse me, is to send them to um, different um, um, meetings or programs and learn some skills for the area that they're going to be teaching in. That's that's what our organization does. Okay. And, and I think that's that's about it. I can't think of anything <laughs> else that you haven't hit that I've been involved in. Yeah, we got quite a few things today. No, I think so. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for sharing everything. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. The Lowell Area Historical Museum is proud to sponsor community oral history interviews. The Lowell Area Historical Museum educates, enriches, and inspires our community and visitors through the preservation and presentation of Lowell Area history. For reservations and more information, contact the Lowell Area Historical Museum at 616 897-7688